Hi everyone, my name is Tyler and this is Aftertouch Audio. Today I want to actually go ahead and look at template building and how you guys can go ahead and organize your template as this seems to be one of the more common questions over on my Discord channel. Templates are usually broken up into five main sections, the dialogue, the sound effects, the music, the foley, and the ambiences. And um, there's a kind of an industry standard way of working and then there is just like parting out for like smaller projects type working. Um, but typically I try to follow this level of working across all of my projects, whether they be in uh, like short little commercial type stuff or big feature films. Um, this is this is kind of the workflow is the way that I like to do things. This is going to be a five part series um, just because the length of these videos in, in terms of like how detailed uh, they're going to be. Okay, before we get started, if you would like to go ahead and support this channel, consider checking out the link in the description below where we have dozens of sound effects libraries catered for your professional needs. Okay, so here's my template. Um, I have a dialogue, music, foley, sound effects, and BG uh, tracks or groups in here. Um, but today we're just going to be focusing on the dialogue. Uh, next video we'll focus on the music and then foley and sound effects BGs. We'll kind of go through it systematically. But before we get into these those folders, let's actually have a look at the top of the track and see what's going on there. Okay, so I have a video track and I have a stereo audio track. The reason for that being is I can now go ahead and drag on the video track and then the temp mix or the temp audio that they have from the video just gets automatically pulled onto um, this reference track. And this reference track just goes straight out to my mains um, or the stereo master that way. It doesn't touch any of the processing chain. I can kind of hear exactly what they had intended to have on the video. So um, th just below that, though, we have a master Marcus track. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is just a Cubase innuendo thing. I'm not entirely certain if every dog can create marker tracks like this. But effectively, this here is just like the marker track on the top of uh, most timelines. Pro Tools has it. Uh, Ableton has it. It's just a marker track. So uh, that is th the top of the template. That that's everything that's outside of the folder. So let's just go now go ahead and hide that. And we will now go ahead and move on to the dialogue editing template. But just before we go ahead and look at each individual tracks, just note that I have two stereo masters. One of them has my true peak limiter and my loudness meter on it. The other one has nothing on it at all. And that's really the only difference there is. So when you when I show you the routing and you see two stereo masters, just know that that's the only difference between the two stereo masters. Let's go into the dialogue uh, template folder itself. Right away, you'll see a a dialogue master, a dialogue chain two, and a dialogue chain one. Now, the only difference between dialogue chain two and dialogue chain one is dialogue chain two has no processing on it. Dialogue chain one has a little bit of processing on it. So the only reason why I would have two is if I have a certain piece of dialogue or if I have ADR or something on this track that I do not want to route into the actual processing of dialogue chain one, I can just bypass it and go directly to dialogue chain two. That's the only difference between the two of these tracks. That's just how I like to work. So on dialogue chain one, though, I do have a Pro Q3 with just a simple 40 hertz roll off. I can adjust it depending on the content of the mix. I then have Saturn 2 with just a smidget of saturation slash compression. It's only going at about 2%. It just kind of helps push that dialogue just a touch forward. That's about all it's doing. Um, I also have two um, plugins here, uh, Pow Air and Wave Rider. They're more for podcast mastering and for the uh, for the YouTube channel, but they're there uh, in case I need them. But um, you can use Wave Rider on movies to help keep your dialogue more consistent. I have used it. It's great. To Dialogue Chain 2, however, you can see I, all I have is just a True Peak Limiter, uh, and I use ISL2 for that, but really any True Peak Limiter will work. Um, I think Nuendo comes with a stock one, and I think Pro Tools does as well. Um, but just a true peak limiter in order to go ahead and catch those peaks. On the dialogue master at all, I, of course, I have nothing. This is totally a way for me to bounce out the dialogue stem, so nothing on it at all, and that helps me go ahead and um, be able to see where I'm at uh, level-wise. Okay, so underneath that, I have a dialogue VCA fader. So this here now allows me to go ahead and adjust the overall levels of all the dialogue tracks and kind of have it all on one fader. Super, super helpful to mix, but it also goes ahead and helps balance the reverb sends and all that jazz. Um, so I have this on here, and it's routed through dialogue tracks one through eight. Um, just below that, we have a dialogue marker track. And again, I, I think this is solely of Cubase and Nuendo, but uh, you can effectively create as many marker tracks as you want in, in these DAWs. Um, but I, I sometimes I like to have just dialogue-specific markers, so I will go ahead and just throw those on the dialogue track, and then they live within the dialogue folder. They don't bug up anything else, or I don't have like hundreds of lines going across my screen. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and go to the actual audio tracks themselves. So we have dialogue tracks one through eight. Now, I'm only going to show you one of these because they're all the same. Every single dialogue track is all the same. If I need more tracks, I will add more tracks. Some dialogue mixers like to have it so you have a checkerboard, so you have dialogue one, dialogue two, dialogue one, dialogue two, or sometimes dialogue like three or four tracks. 
I personally like to have my dialogue delivered to me um, where each tr each person is on their own track. Um, it's just a different way of working. However, this template uh, accommodates both. On my dialogue processing itself, uh, it's pretty bare, not a whole lot going on because I like to do it all throughout the mix as I go through it. But we have a Pro Q3 with uh, this simple sort of EQ curve. It's pretty straightforward. It is a low cut, a high cut, just to kind of like bring in the dialogue together. Then we have a high boost, um, just to kind of help build up that presence because a lot of the labs that we get are underneath clothing. So they need just a little bit of presence boost there. So I find I'm doing that EQ preset a lot. So that's why that's there. And then I just uh, dip out 400 Hertz for the muddy. Uh, and of course, this gets adjusted as we go through. Uh, next up, we have SPL Dverb Plus. Um, I'm actually thinking about changing this out for another one on Veil. Um, I, I've been playing around with that. That's a really cool uh, D-reverb. This is the one that I've been using across all my mixes moving forward. But yeah, it is super, super handy. Uh, the next plugin is actually pretty new. It is the Ava Multiband Compressor. Uh, I'm just trying it out. This used to be Pro MB, um, but now it is Ava uh, Multiband Compressor. I'm just trying it out in the template. But effectively, it's just a multiband compressor. Next up is the Ava DSer. This is, has to be one of my favorite DSers I found. I used to do, or I used to use a lot of Fat Filter Pro DS. I thought that was really, really good. It still is a fantastic DSer. I found this one here just to be so simple to use. Um, the visual analyzer on it's really, really good. But I have that across all of my dialogue tracks, and it really, really helps kind of dial it in. Okay, so that is basically the dialogue processing that I do, uh, just out of the box and stuff like that. But um, I will add more or less if if need be. In terms of of reverbs and stuff like that or sends I have a lot going on there so we have a dialogue room reverb a dialogue hall reverb an exterior reverb and a car reverb but that is essentially the four reverbs I use after that I actually go ahead and use two delay units so I use a plugin called slapper for these but I have an exterior delay and I have an interior delay and I can kind of checkerboard between those two settings those are the sends I use essentially across the entirety of the template okay so now into routing each dialogue track gets routed into dialogue chain one dialogue chain one gets routed into dialogue chain two dialogue chain two gets into routed into the dialogue master master gets routed into stereo master and then stereo master just gets routed to my my master master right so that is effectively the the routing for the dialogue tracks moving on in the dialogue template because there's actually a little bit more going on in here we now have pfx tracks and these are production effects these are things that when i go ahead and get a dialogue mix, an AAF or whatever, um, I can then go ahead and so let's say uh, someone's banging away on a hammer and stuff like that, and in between that they're talking, I can take those hammer bangs and just bring them down onto the PFX tracks. Now the PFX tracks are not going to my dialogue master, even though they're in the dialogue master group. They're actually going to my SFX master. Um, they don't have any processing on them. Effectively, I do a lot of um, clip processing, but I process the clips instead of doing a lot, whole lot of like track automation and stuff like that uh, when I'm mixing. So... They're pretty bare, they're pretty easy, it's just uh, mono tracks themselves. Moving into here, we now have futzed dialogue. So what what is futzed dialogue? Well, essentially it has the exact same processing, the exact same routing as my regular dialogue tracks. The only difference is I have a plugin on here called speakerphone. And what this does is it does essentially what it says it does. It throws things and makes it sound like it's through a speakerphone. Whether it be a phone, a mega horn, um, whatever you want, but it doesn't just have to be that. It can be dialogue that you throw through dehumanizer or processed in other sort of weird, wacky ways. Um, that is effectively what these futz dialogue tracks are. They're processed dialogue more than you, you would do with other stuff, but they follow the exact same routing as the rest of them. Dialogue chain one, dialogue chain two, DX master, stereo master, and stereo master. They follow the exact same path. And when they have the exact same plugins and the exact same reverb sends. super, super easy to deal with. The last bit of thing that I do here is I have a ADR folder track, which I keep hidden most of the time because I don't deal with a lot of ADR in, in, in my studio. At the same time, when I do get it, I can effectively go ahead and just deal with it here. So if we come up to my ADR track here, we open up uh, one of them. Um, they're essentially blank. And the reason for that being is um, there's no kind of temp process for uh, ADR. I might have to go ahead and really shape it with an EQ. I might have to de-reverb it depending on where it was recorded, or I might have to go ahead and change the routing. So they're pretty blank, um, but they do follow the same routing. These tracks and the and the uh, Futz Dialogues tracks are the one tracks that I tend to go ahead and throw through Dialogue uh, Chain 2 and just bypass Dialogue Chain 1. Okay, so quickly going over to the reverb, uh, as we discussed before, they're all altiverb, and the routing of them is a little bit different. They don't go to dialogue chain one, they don't go to dialogue chain two, and they just go straight to the dialogue master. 
Reason for that being is sometimes I will go ahead and actually send reverb on Dialog Chain 1 or Dialog Chain 2, depending on the circumstance, how many actors are speaking. And if I just want to go ahead and send everyone through a short room reverb, I can do that just with the one fader rather than doing it across eight or 16 or however many dialogue tracks I have. So I do have two delays being the uh, exterior and interior delays. They both have different presets, but effectively I'm using a delay plugin called Slapper. So Slapper is really, really helpful. It's, it's, it's one of the most intuitive delay plugins I've ever seen in terms of like, oh, I know, know what's going on. Super helpful. I could spend an entire uh, just uh, YouTube episode just on this plugin alone. It is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I, I do have um, an interior delay here and an exterior delay there. In terms of going ahead and actually editing on this here, each person gets their own dialogue track. And when each person gets their own dialogue track, I can end up creating custom presets just for that track itself. I hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you guys next time.